Hi again, this is Jeff, your protopie expert answering your protopie questions. In one of the very first Ask Protopie videos I made, I showed you how to reset audio and video files so that way you can play them back over and over again. In the comment sections to that video, Chana asked, I want a button to go 30 seconds forward and 30 seconds backward no matter where I am in the audio. Is that possible? Yeah, sure it is. I'm going to show you how to do it. In my Pi here, I have a simple audio player and I'm using a free audio track from Ben Sound called Jazzy Frenchy. And if I preview this, it sounds like this. Kind of nice, cool track. What I'd like to do is I'd like to be able to click these buttons here and skip forward 30 seconds or back 30 seconds from whatever point I am in the playback. Now, in order to make sure that this is working exactly as I'd like, I'd like to have something that shows me where I am in the audio, showing me the number of seconds. And I'm going to use a variable for this. So I'm going to create a new variable for this scene. And let's call this audio time. And instead of giving it an explicit value, I'm going to use a formula. And this is a great technique if you want to keep track of particular properties of any objects in your scene. And I'm going to use a formula. And what I'd like to do is I would like to use the sound file. And when I hit the dot character, I'm going to get all of the properties of that one here. And I want this one at the bottom called current time. And what this will do is whatever the value of the current playback time is, well, it'll assign it to this variable and it'll update every time it changes. So if I turn on the debug, that's this little ladybug icon here, I get this green box over here. And if I preview this, now you're going to see this updates as I play. Okay, I'm just having it there so we can see things happen uh, numerically. I can turn this off later and I can always turn it off by just unchecking the ladybug variable, but we're going to leave it on for now. Let's hook up the skip forward button. I'm going to add a tap trigger to that, the skip forward control, and I'm going to use the playback control. And on the sound file, I'm going to use the seek option here. And instead of putting in an absolute number here, I'm going to use a formula. And once again, I'm going to use that current time property of the sound file. And then I'm just going to add 30 to it. Plus 30. Now let's preview this, and this should work. I'm playing this. And right now I'm at 1, 2, 3. Let's hit this forward button. And there I go, added 30 seconds. And it worked again. All right, let's do the same for the skip back button. I'm going to add a trigger here tap for the skip back control and we'll use a playback response once again on the audio file I'm going to seek using a formula and I want the sound file and I'm going to use the current time current time property minus 30 now this should be working let's preview this I'm going to start playing, we're going to skip forward a couple of times, and I'm going to skip backwards a couple of times. And you can see, this all works. Okay, you could stop here, and this would give you exactly what you're looking for. But as we all know, when we make these kind of things, we need to make changes quickly. Let's say you're using this in a user testing session, and you want to test whether or not 30 seconds is the right amount to skip forward and backwards. You'd want a way to change this quickly, so that way you could test multiple different values. You could make multiple versions of this pie, one for 30 seconds, one for 15 seconds, one for, 30, uh, one for 10 seconds, one for 20 seconds, etc., etc., etc. But that's duplicating your work several times. So let's make this configurable. What I'd like to do is I'd like to change it so that way it'll default to 30 seconds, but I can change it to, say, 10 seconds if I wanted to. And I'm going to use a variable for that too. I'm going to make a new variable for this scene, and I'm going to call this skip amount. And we will set it to 30 for now, because that's what we're using. And now if I preview this, you're going to notice nothing has changed. Everything behaves exactly as it did before because we haven't told it to do anything with this variable. In my playback formula, instead of saying current time plus 30 here, I'm going to use my skip amount variable instead. And similarly, in the skip back control, I'm going to do the same thing. All right, let's play this again. 
and this should still be working. Skip forward, skip back. Okay, now let's change it. Let's change this to, say, 10 seconds. Now when I do this, keep an eye on the audio time here, and it should go forward 10 seconds. There we go. And backwards, 10 seconds. All right, all well and good, but my display says 30 seconds. I'd also like that to reflect uh, my skip amount as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a start trigger. And in my start trigger, I'm going to use a couple of text responses to rename that label. So we use text, and the, I'm going to use the skip forward label and a formula once again because I'm going to be building this dynamically. I'm going to start with explicit text. So I use quotes for that and this will be plus and then when you're joining text you use the plus character again a little bit confusing so in quotes this is explicit text and whatever i put in between the quotes will just be written to the screen as is a bit confusing here because i've got the plus here and then i've got the plus again here these mean two different things now when the plus is outside of the quotes this is how you join text together and i'm going to use skip amount and i'm going to add a bit more text and i want a little lowercase s for seconds and I'm going to add a second text response for the skip back label. And I'm going to do the same thing, except this will be, there we go, skip amount plus, and then I'll finish that with the seconds. Okay, let's preview this now. Now you see my label shows minus 10 seconds and plus 10 seconds to match my skip amount. And if I change this to say 25 seconds, And I preview this. Now you see, minus 25, plus 25. Go forward 25, and go backwards 25. So there you go. That's a nice way to have something quickly configurable. So in a testing scenario, you can test out all sorts of different things. This is a great thing to do in many of your pies. Anytime you can anticipate where you might want to make quick changes, it's a good idea to make it configurable in this way. There you go. Easy as pie. This is how you make a uh, a skip forward and skip back control for your audio. Also, this will work for video in exactly the same way. So if you're wondering if this will work for video, yeah, it will. If you've run into a snag with one of your pies and you'd like to ask us for help, just check out the link in the description below. As always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.